Welcome to the All About TRH podcast, aka All About the Real Housewives, aka All About the Truth. On this week's episode, we get into Jacqueline Larita's response to Jackie releasing her text messages and what Jacqueline thinks about Andy questioning Teresa trusting her. Plus, we do a deep dive and expose Louis Ruelas' ex-girlfriend with court documents and receipts. We reveal history of alleged stalking, harassment, and framing of exes, forcing exes to file orders of protection. We reveal everything Margaret Joseph has failed to mention. Hi, Chantel. Hey, Roxanne. Happy Thursday. I know. Basically, happy the day before Taylor Swift concert for me, and I'm so excited. Oh, my gosh. Just so you guys know, Chantel's absolutely obsessed with Taylor Swift. Yeah, I'm definitely a Swifty. I used to have a blog on Tumblr. Yeah. Whatever makes- happened to that? Um, She went into hiding for a while, and then I graduated college, and then... <laughs> And, yeah, and life and happened. On. Right, exactly. So you moved on. No, no, I didn't move on. There was nothing to report. She like literally went into hiding for a while. See, that's why I don't believe celebrities when they, you know, say like, oh, the paparazzi, I can't get away. Because if you, like, you could get away if you really wanted to. Yeah, but like, should they need to? Like, you know, it's just a little fine line. But yeah, you definitely can hide. You can go to a different state. Okay, this isn't a debate, Chantal. <laughs> so things. We're not going to have a debate. All I know is that Eminem lives in the same state as us. And he lives in areas that we're always at. And we've never, never seen, ever him. seen him. Not <laughs> even a second. Like, this guy just like lives in his house. It's quite scary. Really true. I know. Imagine his life. But this has been, I mean, the week for of hell for me. It's absolutely been the week of hell. Um, we had three reunions. I'm working. And then my daughter gets a virus. And it's not just any virus. It's a, like a five-day virus. So we had to take her to the hospital. I mean, she's good. I think there's just something going around. Um, but that meant I had to work with her home. And um, Yeah, you were, you were having it. Yeah. And I couldn't even do podcasts with you. I couldn't like, um, you know, it's hard because there's three reunions going on this week. So you have to be on top of that. And then we have work. And then I have my wild child who she is someone like you cannot work properly if she's there. Whereas in my older and even my baby, like Ken, like they can, you know, we can figure something out for them. But oh my gosh, I'm exhausted. That's all I have to say. I've been calling Chantal a hundred times complaining. Yeah. How is she doing? Is she like better today? She did seem better today, but who knows? Who knows? Because she keeps, like, getting these things where she'll be better, and then she's not. So, Aww. yeah. There were lots well, of and kisses. Yeah, we have, a, we have a crazy episode. I know. We have a very intense episode. Um, uh, this episode is about Jacqueline Larita, and then we're going to talk about the truth regarding Louis Ruelas' ex girlfriend or ex fiance. Yeah, we're just going to call her a girlfriend at this point because I know that she would go on Bravo chat rooms and correct people and say, I was the ex fiance, not the ex girlfriend. Oh, I love giving it back to them. So, hey, girlfriend. Yeah, yeah hey. <laughs> um, but sh- first, let's talk about the Jacqueline Larita stuff that happened yeah so i heard you got some gossip for everyone you put out some text messages you're the text message queen i know no we're the receipts we come with receipts you guys (laughs) so yeah i mean on part two of the reunion we talk about how melissa revealed that jacqueline larita spoke poorly of Teresa. um and then this came after Teresa told andy that jacqueline told her the gorgas hung out with people who had involvement with her going to prison um, so a lot of people were coming and they were like, those texts aren't real. Melissa edited those texts. They're not real. And I was like, and I even tweeted to you guys and I was like, no, these texts are a hundred percent real. Um, and yeah, we can confirm that they're real and there's a lot of them. And, you know, we spoke to Jacqueline and she told us, yeah, the texts are from 2021, two years before Teresa and her made up. Jacqueline says that they would both trash each other publicly and privately. So she's not sure why now it's relevant. And the story behind the text messages is that Jackie had reached out to Jacqueline Larita, making several attempts to talk to her about Teresa and what could have been a possible setup. And we have the text to prove it. So if you go on all about we have the text messages where 
multiple times, Jackie is reaching out to Jacqueline to arrange some time for them to speak. Jackie, Jackie texts Jacqueline initially. She's like, hi, honey, it's Jackie. I just wanted to make sure you have my cell number. Sometimes my manager reads my Instagram messages since he does my social media. He has friends with some of the other women, so I like to keep stuff private. We should come back to Jersey and destroy that B-I-T-C-H with me sending love. And you have to go go on all about TRH.com, read the text messages because it's wild and it's kind of like pathetic coming from Jackie. It was so scary, like how badly she wanted to take her down. It's like, yeah, like Teresa is never like you've never seen her ever try to sit there and take someone down on the show as much as like this girl's trying to do that. Like, why are you reaching out to her enemy that's that's not on the show anymore like trying to get so many things on her it's it was really weird well i know that a lot of the times people who don't like a mutual person they do and it's sad but they can get close based off of not liking that mutual person yeah uh well i mean we were told that when jacqueline and Teresa reunited in 2022 they didn't even discuss melissa by the way initially it wasn't until weeks after that jacqueline felt that Teresa needed to know what the gorgos did behind her back Teresa also shared things with jacqueline but unsurprisingly the gorgas were playing both sides and that's what jacqueline found out and then despite melissa's effort to try to cause a wedge between Teresa and Jacqueline, they're better than ever. Teresa literally has no hard feelings. You know, they we we've been told that Teresa acknowledges that she said some things about Jacqueline as well. They weren't on good terms. They made a pact actually not to mention Melissa or you know Princess Gorga's name again to each other when all was said and done. Um, I like we, that. Yeah, we did ask Jacqueline about her thoughts on Andy making it sound like she shouldn't be trusted. And she told us, I think he was trying to say that he doesn't trust our friendship is sincere just because we both were at a bad place, said things, and all of a sudden we're good. He knows how much we hated each other, so it's fair for him to think that. All okay, right, yeah. Yeah. Jacqueline, I agree, too. Like it's, yeah. It's, yeah, but, like, yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. What were we going to no, say? No, no, I'm, I'm trying to I'm trying to gather my thoughts about it. <laughs> okay. Jacqueline did tell us that when she found out the texts were right at the reunion that she did reach out to Jackie and Jackie played dumb and acted like she never reached out to her first, which if you go on all about terryh.com it shows Jackie reaching out multiple times to speak to Jacqueline and initially reaching out to her, getting her number, texting her all that stuff. Jacqueline believes that Melissa got a heads up before the reunion. Um, and that's why Melissa was trying to do this. Melissa is a very calculated person and Jacqueline knows that better than anyone. To me, it was it's, we, like we said on the last episode, it was weird that she let Melissa be the one to say it. And the text message didn't even say that much. Like it was just, she was talking shit about Teresa. Like she was talking about her look. She was talking about whatever. It's like, you guys have all done the same thing. Yeah. I mean, it was, it was wild, but it was wild, but I mean, it's not the first time we've heard people who don't like someone talking shit about that person and being wild in it. You know, they don't like them at the time. They're in a great place now. I do think hurt people hurt people. And that's where that is. That's where, you know, Jacqueline was. Yeah. So yeah, that's all the Jacqueline stuff. All the texts are on all about TRH.com. All about TRH always delivers and we always have receipts. So it's on well, I there. hope she knows not to trust Jackie anymore and she comes after her. I mean, her. obviously, she does not. <laughs> I mean, she's she also is moving and she's literally in the middle of moving to Orange County, so she doesn't even give a crap what um, Jackie is saying and what Melissa is saying because I think Teresa literally does not care. So if Teresa doesn't care, then why does she care to, like, defend herself? She really doesn't. And she uh, also commented on someone's post and, like, you can tell she really does not care about the show because yeah, she, she even... Doesn't. Yeah, she even says, like, I can't wait for us to hang out again in California off camera. Like, it's something that sh- it's not for us She's to see in the relationship. Orange County. She's yeah. not coming back to Jersey. For the people who are like, oh, Jacqueline just wants to come back on the show. Jacqueline's not coming back. She's in... She just moved to Orange County. She has no affiliation with Jersey at this point. So she's not coming back, you guys. That's not why... You know, she's doing any of this. They actually had a real friendship for years prior to the show. It wasn't like BS where they become friends because of the show. So, yeah. Um, Now we are going to get into something that is very, very wild. Um, Something that I had to compile and put together that took me about five hours to put together. Wow. 
<laughs> I'm not even kidding. And I and I think I sent it to Chantel. We appreciate and, your work. And I don't even think that Chantel, did you even go through it? I did. Do not do not say that, okay? Okay. I don't know. But I it read was, it all. Okay, well, it was a lot. And, you know, recently, Louis, um, his ex-girlfriend, and I've tried not to mention this ex-girlfriend because I realized that she thrives off attention. The, re- the reason that I realized that is because one day, um, I looked through her messages, by the way, and she had messaged me when Louis first made an appearance on the show. So, uh, so this is like an ex now talking and messaging blogs like myself about Louis. And, um, one day I looked at her Instagram account and it was all about like narcissism. Like she, she dedicates her life to that. And it was, you know, just constantly like talking about not naming Louie because in court documents that I read, she's not allowed to say his name. So, and he's not allowed to say her name. So, um, it was just basically everything about Louie. And then I looked at her following list and she was following everyone on, um, Teresa's family, including her daughters. She was following, um, Melissa, Melissa's family. She was following Joe, every single person on the real houses of New Jersey. So she even has a highlight on Instagram that says R H O N J. Wow. So, have you ever seen the movie Obsessed, Chantel, with Beyonce? No. Oh, my God. Okay. This is what I mean about <laughs> Chantel, who's never, like... Anyways, I mean, it was it was not, like, the best movie, but it was, like, it got, like, that hype back in the day. And this whole thing reminds me of a movie. Now, I know that you guys say, oh, is Louie paying her? Oh, is um, Teresa paying her? They must be on their payroll. We've consistently, and I have to remind you guys, have had this opinion since 2012 when we constantly saw lies that Melissa and Joe spread coming on to the show. So we've consistently had this opinion. It's not about being like, Teresa's perfect. It's not about that. It's about exposing lies. Like they're, everyone's not perfect. Everyone does something. It's about exposing lies. Yeah, even with this, I think it's really, it's like almost like a Netflix documentary that you're like trying to show the side. It's not, and nothing has, it has nothing to do with about Louie or you liking Louie or whatever opinion we have. It's just showing like, and and someone has done the like a lot of the dive, which I think yeah, you're we'll going to mention. Yeah, it, yeah. Mm-hmm. It, it, these are and everything that we're going to be talking about. Uh, we're they're from court documents. Okay, so that's how intense this case is. Is that there's so much court documents to this. I'm not kidding when I tell you how long it took me to write this. By Friday, check out allabouttrh.com. We will have we will have it all on the website. You know, majority of the documents, but we're going to be sharing it on this podcast first. Everything we are saying is just our opinion based on two public figures, because at this point she considers herself a public figure. And it is so important that the truth is out there because imagine if this was your son dealing with it. Like I was going through all of this and I'm like, what if my son married someone like this? Like, that's what I started thinking because I'm like, (laughs) oh my God. It really is scary. I mean, that's why you go ahead. Like, why didn't he have that judge of character for her? Like, I, just, I do think sometimes people are just blinded by love. And I know. They like to see the good in people. For and, sure. Or like, you know, like sometimes like people like to fight in relationships. Not saying that they did, but you know, like, you know how it is. Like, I do think sometimes, not all the time, so people don't come for me. I do think sometimes you go for people who are a little crazy because it's, yeah, like you said, it's fun. It's fun in the beginning and then you don't right. realize what what it really leads to. Right. Absolutely. So I'm going to go over a lot. Um, so you guys buckle up. Okay? Yeah, literally buckle it, up. It, grab your coffee, yes. grab your wine, whatever you're drinking right now. You go guys, ahead. this is going to be shocking, but this is a man's life and it is scary. And I do think that, you know, she has taken advantage of other women Um, and you know, has come out and it's kind of like the Amber Heard stuff. You guys, I'm not kidding. It's kind of like the Amber Heard stuff. Again, I am go, these are all from court documents. Wait, question real quick. Yeah. You're bringing this up now. Why go, do you want to explain that? Yeah. Yeah. I'm bringing this up because Louie actually recently got a restraining order against Mm -hmm. him, um, from her. And uh, we will talk a little bit about that. So she's making headlines, but you guys in. I'll touch on it a little bit later. Before making headlines, she calls Kim D, the Real Housewives of New, you know, New Jersey friend. Yeah. She tells Kim D, Kim D, guess what? I'm going to file a restraining order on Louie. I'm going to put it on page six. Um, 
someone who's a victim of abuse, they don't do stuff like that. They don't call blogs, give them a heads up so that those, you know, people like Kim D can hype it up to the world. You know, actual victims don't want to be around that. So uh, I just want you guys to know what I found based on all these court documents is that she has a, an alleged stalking harassment um, and history of framing exes, forcing her exes to file orders of protection. So this is all the stuff that Margaret Josephs isn't telling you. So uh, Louis' ex-girlfriend, the one who, again, has claimed to be the victim of being in an abusive relationship with a narcissist. Again, she files this restraining order on Louis Ruelas. And uh, for those who don't know, Louis actually filed a restraining order against her back in 2020. Yeah, this has been going on. Oh, but you're going to get into it, the timeline, because I think it's very important. Yeah. Yeah, it's been going on for years. For three years. Yeah, it's, yeah, that's very scary. And it's been going on. And she's been going on in involved in legal stuff since 2018 with her ex as well. So Vanessa has a history with labeling her exes and attempting to defame them to anyone who will listen. Prior to Louis, Vanessa was married two previous times. Uh, Vanessa claims that her first husband, who she had a son with, was abusive she claims her second husband, Glenn Riser, was a cheater, and she now has labeled Teresa Judice's husband, Louis Ruelas, a narcissist. Prior to marrying her second husband, Glenn, Vanessa also dated a man named Paul Devlin, I think, who has um, an association with MLB. So baseball? Um, yes. So Paul, Paul claimed that Vanessa stole his Jeep and then put an order of protection against him. Ooh. According to court documents, Paul even sent a letter to Glenn while he was married, while Glenn was married to Vanessa, warning him about Vanessa Riser. Wait, this so was, the one boyfriend sent another to the new boyfriend? To the warning? husband at the time, yeah. Wow. This was found in court documents against Vanessa Riser. So this is from Paul. And he writes, Glenny, I guess I'll start from the beginning. And I, I go on all about TerryH.com, like the letters on there. I guess I'll start from the beginning with the truth. You're too nice of a guy to go through life not knowing the truth. From the start, you were part of a devilish, diabolical, ungodly plot in which you were sought. A nice, quiet, mild-mannered, somewhat sedated Jewish guy with money was to be had. Um, and you were found on Facebook. Your purpose was to rescue a woman in debt and save her house and be there as her cash register, all in which you wouldn't care because you're getting a pretty woman which blindsided you. Yes, pretty on the outside, but self-centered, and every single thing must be about her, and she's always scheming on the inside. And you guys will see that all of this is absolutely true, and this all happens with Louis as well. Think about it. How is your sex life? Maybe you just get something once in a while to pacify you, to keep you shilling out the cash for her needs. Truth be told, she'd rather have a nice vagina than your P-N-I-S. Oh, Glennie, wow. <laughs> watch, your, watch your cash. Watch her in the bars when she is drunk and don't let this get out of hand. You're only married a couple of years. And as you can tell, you will never come first or does she have much interest in doing many things with you? Cause it's all about her. You're just a wallet to her. And hopefully one day she isn't gone with half of it with another woman in a bar and laughing it up. Do you really know her? This was a letter from Paul. I would be so funny. scared if I got this mm -hmm. letter about my, my I, current I like, mean he was scared because he filed a restraining order against her oh my god yeah I would be like she's going to kill me in my sleep that Netflix, is what I was saying Netflix where are you <laughs> yes so on May 18 2018 Glenn Riser files a restraining order against Vanessa Riser Glenn Riser says that while he and Vanessa figured out their divorce he requested to move into an extra room in their marital residence until things were all sorted out Glenn states that Vanessa, Louis' ex, committed the following family offenses, disorderly conduct, harassment in the first or second degree, stalking and criminal. Glenn discusses an altercation with Vanessa where she was intoxicated, stumbling, smelling of alcohol, and enraged. He asked her to leave, and when she finally did, he heard a big bang and had to contact the police department, filing a domestic incident report. Glenn recalls, Quote, the following morning, I noticed a dent on my car, which was caused by Vanessa the night prior. Glenn talks about an in incident from May 15, 2018, where, in a, where his attorney submitted uh, their Verizon bill, which contained his phone records. Glenn says that Vanessa took it upon herself to begin contacting numbers found on her phone records and zoned in on his friend, Danielle. He describes Danielle as a married mom with an eight-year-old son. 
Vanessa began contacting Danielle and Danielle's husband, accusing Glenn of having an affair with Danielle. He then informed his attorney. So on May 18th, 2018, he was informed that Vanessa was allegedly um, played or that Vanessa allegedly. So Louis ex in 2018 to her ex-husband placed a tracker on his vehicle and has a report about his whereabouts since January of 2018. Glenn says that Vanessa had been stalking him for months now and this is rich because now Vanessa is claiming that Louie is stalking her. Oh my God. This is wild. Yes. It's a movie. Glenn this is says. Louie child. Vanessa, you, you, you're busy, huh? I know. Glenn says since May 16th, Vanessa has been contacting Danielle's husband, my sister, our mutual friends nonstop harassing and making false accusations that I've been having an affair. Vanessa is making threats to Danielle. This is affecting my work and my day-to-day. Vanessa has no legitimate reason to engage in this behavior. I moved from the marital residence in December. We are in the middle of action for divorce. Glenn pleads, I am afraid for my safety. Vanessa's behavior, Vanessa does not want a divorce, and her behavior has been increasingly erratic since being served with the action for divorce. She is unstable. Glenn then requests an order of protection that Vanessa be ordered to stay away from him, his home, workplace and that Vanessa refrain from any and all communication with him or any third parties about him. This is exactly what she does ends up doing with Louis Ruelas. You know, she contacts everybody. You know, what's crazy is that like this Glenn guy probably was so happy that she found Louis because she finally like probably moved on from him. Yeah. I wonder if he, did he ever contact Louis and warn him or no? I can't speak on that. Okay. I, I, I'm not c- completely sure. Yeah, I just, wanted, I just wanted to see. No, I, I, it's not on court documents, so I'm not sure. I mean, I know in court documents that Louis has a lot of things from Glenn, so it could be. I don't know. Okay. Glenn was granted the restraining order from his ex-wife, Vanessa, by the way. Um, the ex-girlfriend has allegedly been stalking Louie and repeatedly th- has the same exact patterns since he got with Teresa Judice. Like I said, she even messaged all about Terry H on Instagram regarding Louie's earlier appearance. The ex-girlfriend has made Louie Ruelas last few years a living hell and claims Louie allegedly abused her, yet continues fo- she continues to follow all of his ex-wife's, or her, sorry, his current wife, Teresa's co-stars, Melissa Gorka, Melissa's family members, Joe Gorka, Frank Catania, and more. She engages daily with Melissa Gorka's sisters, comments on majority of Melissa Gorka's photos, Joe Gorka and Frank Catania both follow her on Instagram. Melissa's sisters follow her on Instagram. Margaret Joseph follows her on Instagram. All videos that have been released of Louis Ruelas's since appearing on the Royal Housewives were videos that were sent from Vanessa. They were like, only sent to Vanessa. It's so crazy because obviously the cast members that want to take her down, hearing this information, they're probably like, oh my God, this is gold. This is amazing. Not realizing all the past history with this girl. I think they know, but this is kind of what's sad about the media. The media hasn't reported any of this, so they don't care to know about that side because it doesn't benefit them. But Mm. this is someone who has a history, who has restraining orders on her, who's had warnings from ex exes, ex-husbands. Multiples. Yes. So it, it's a it's a, um, a reoccurrence. This ex-girlfriend has, um, you know, again, allegedly been in contact with Margaret Joseph for the last few years. And like we said, they both follow each other on Instagram. Victims who have been horrifically abused, as Vanessa has claimed, typically want nothing to do with the abuser. As for Vanessa, she has made it her life mission to ruin Louis Ru- Ruelas's life even following Teresa Judice's daughters on social media before they blocked her. Oh my God. So now we're going to go, we're going to do the story of Vanessa and Louie. And this deep dive comes from the Instagram account, Bravo. I want to make sure I say it right. Bravo, Bravo, ducking Bravo, who did a great job. Go follow them with laying out all the details. They probably spent, so I spent four hours putting this together they probably spend, you know, I spent like four to five hours. They probably spend God knows what. So they, you know, definitely have all the court documents. So a lot. Yeah, of she did her like, research for yeah, sure. So she, yeah, she has the court documents and then would have an opinion about it. So we are reporting, you know, based on her. So go check her out. Um, and uh, this is from Reddit. So someone actually did like um, a recap of basically what Bravo Ducking Bravo put on social media. And it says... 
Um, it, it kind of talks about Louis's history and it says that, you know, he was married to his first wife, Marissa. He has two sons, one with autism. He, uh, you know, it talks about his work. It talks about his divorce. And then let's just go right to the Vanessa stuff. Okay. Him and his ex-wife have a good relationship. His ex-wife. And I, I, and I do want to uh, point out that it's a big deal, you guys. So like if, if he had multiple people that are acting like a Vanessa, that would be a really big red flag. But if there's only one and the other ex-wife that he has kids with has no problems. Okay. Like open your eyes. Right. Well, I will say that Vanessa did contact the other ex to, and they like did videos together after Vanessa contacted the other ex and her name is Paula. So uh, they did. So Vanessa hated Paula with stock Paula. And we know this because we talked to Vanessa's friends who we have some things, you guys. Oh. Um, yeah. And so Vanessa would stock Paula. But the second that Louis and Van Louis and um, Vanessa broke up, she went and reached out to Paula. And she even tried to get in contact with Teresa when Teresa and Louis started, you know, um, dating. So anyways, so um June 2018, he starts a relationship with Vanessa Riser. On October 2018, she moves in with him. He pays off her mortgage. This is kind of like what Paul said was okay. going to happen to Glenn. Hey, Louie, can we get together? I know, I know right. <laughs> Seriously. This is he, not funny, you guys. Right? I'm sorry. I'm just yeah. like trying to bring you No, he's humor. honestly being framed. Like, it's crazy. I know. He, he supports her in getting her mental health practitioner license. February 2019, he proposes to her, and he also establishes an LLC for a teletherapist.com. He pays for her mother's house renovations, opens a joint bank account, and puts a very large amount of money in the bank account. He proposed with a hundred and $35,000 ring. <gasps> Why haven't we found guys like this when we got married? <laughs> I'm just kidding. No, seriously. We're, no. Mama needs a new house. Like, I swear. I Literally. <laughs> All right. So. Um, okay, Lou, you're, you're too nice, boo. Yeah. Like, that's a little scary of your house. Yeah, <laughs> I know. But it, but it sounds like Glenn Riser did the same thing. And then so she did clearly the other ha She clearly knows how to ask where. Like, remember you sent me a TikTok about, like, those girls that ask for things. And, like, we're, we're sitting here, like, barely getting, like, yeah, we're like yeah, the we're dishes washed. Like, <laughs> right. We're like, no, we'll do it. It's fine. It's fine. What? Like, so, you know? really, mm -hmm. it really probably she knew how to ask for the things that she needed, you know? Yeah, exactly. Was vocal about it. But, yeah. Yeah. Um, so for some reason they had like three marriage contracts. They all add things for her, like financial support for her business, a black American express, a $1.7 million vacation home, wedding deposit, a car for her son and somewhere between 175 and 350,000 of savings on their deposit, uh, deposited on their account. The wedding was supposed to take place in July, 2020 in October, 2019. They're on a holiday in a town called, um, Province Town. Mm -hmm. Yeah. After a big fight, he drives back to his house and she travels by herself in a separate car. He claims she did not want to go with him. She claims he abandoned her. She rents a car and makes it back to the house before him. And we're going to talk a little bit more about this. He claims that it was done in this deceiving way um, by using her son to call him and ask him to go back, which he did. He asked her at least five times not to go to the house and upset his sons because he wants to give them peace and then allow her the next day to collect her things. Police is called, you know, um, by both of them when he comes home and she's inside. She claims in multiple emails, texts that she was locked out, but the police will find her inside the property collecting things. This was October 30th, 2019. I wonder if like the police like just searches her name and sees like, oh, hello, like a year ago you were doing the exact same thing to another guy. Right. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, he claims that in the document she stored at his house, there was 15... This is the craziest part. Okay, I'm going to say this again. So Louis Ruelas claims in court documents that his ex, Vanessa, who has been framing him, stalking him, and harassing him, and who has been in contact with everyone that knows him um, and has been reaching out to those people and stalking them, um, allegedly, that's, how, that's my opinion on what I've been seeing, that... In his house, there were 15 years worth of data on her previous partners, including personal and financial passwords, bank account details, healthcare provider providers, personal credit cards, and quotes as well about things that her ex-partners would say. He found um, all these documents, and they have been submitted to the court. So she probably like has like a flash drive with folders. Everything. <laughs> like, this yeah. is wild. This is not a sane <laughs> woman. In my opinion, this is not someone who is okay. This is someone who, like Lala Ken said on Vanderpump Rules, needs an um, you know, an evaluation, a mental evaluation. Um she sounds a little like 
Raquel? No, I was gonna say like bipolar or something, but like maybe that's a that's my opinion. I'm not saying like you know she is, but it sounds like she's just erratic. She's erratic at some yeah, point, and then at some point, yeah. yeah. Um. So okay, so yeah, so she divorced. We talked about that she divorced her ex husband in May of 2018, one month before meeting Louis. Um. So to me, if she just like you said, her ex husband probably like he probably was like thank God that she met Louis a month later. Because if she didn't, she would have ruined his life like no other. 100%. Like, yeah. Louis was like the godson mm-hmm. for this guy. Like, you know, like, finally, like, some peace of mind that, you know, m- I can have with my new family. Yeah, exactly. There are, you know, what's, like, weird is, like, I don't know. Like, when I Googled her and, like, I was, like, okay, she's going to be the most beautiful woman I've ever seen. Because, like, How? And she's absolutely not. I mean, she looks like Kim D to me, which no shade to Kim D, but she looks like Kim D. So I'm like, what the hell's going on? Anyway, so um, there are at least three events in which he provides evidence um, and tells that she was abusing alcohol and was the cause for huge issues for him during charity events connected to his job. During a trip in which she drunkenly fell asleep in her car after fighting with him and threatening to leave, he provides evidence that she asked for mental help after those events. She created a catfish account with Paula, his ex fiance, oh to contact him. Um, Marissa believed that he didn't buy a new gift for her and that it was Paula, so she contacted her, but then found out. Um, I don't know why she said Marissa. I'm reading a Reddit thing, but Vanessa believed that he didn't buy a ring for her. And so she ended up contacting Paula to say, was it the same ring that he proposed to you with, which I don't even think Paula and him were proposed. So, um, he, she contacts Paula, the ex finds out it's not true. She claims he was manipulating her and that he wanted sex anytime he felt like it, or she would be punished by passive behavior from him. You guys, please read the documents because, this, this is, is where like the sex, the sex freak yeah, comes this is out. Where, this is why they, this is why Margaret Josephs came out and said he's a sex addict because of these lies from this person who's clearly not well, like, clearly needs help, and it's sad because this person like has a son herself. So I'm like, I'm hoping that the son has like a good dad and a good life on that side. Um, he provides a copy of the prenup agreement that Paula was asking him to sign, um, I guess, you know, just to provide more court documents. From March 2020 is when all the legal action starts and the drama gets extreme. She apparently used her new license as a mental health practitioner to diagnose him with bipolar. And she diagnoses him, him with bipolar? <laughs> yes, yes. Girl, Louis I think you're diagnosing ex. yourself. <laughs> yeah. And she, but that's what a narcissist does. And she asks him to get medication for it. She writes a first person letter for him to send to a psychiatrist and to read to his son. Apparently two different doctors do not diagnose him with bipolar, but only diagnose him with anxiety, which is so messed up because he's probably getting anxiety from this person. Exactly. He does read the letter to his son that answers. She is crazy. The emails are just something else. Um, there are screenshots. Go, go, go on all about Terry.com, read them. You guys, this is sick. This is someone who's been stalking Louis Ruelas and has tried to ruin his name. And Margaret Josephs has co-signed this. She has done all of this. She has put this person on a platform. And Margaret for sure knows that all of this exists, all this data, all this court documents of her being unwell, having a restraining order against her from ex-husbands who are scared of her, who ended up moving to a different state. Margaret knows about this and she put this out there for a show. It's really, really sad. I know. Uh, According to court documents, on March, uh, March 25th, 2020, the couple break up. Vanessa entered the main home with a friend carrying a black garbage bag. Louis states that he was watching a movie with one of his sons, and she was very disruptive, yelling, and scared the son. The next day, Louis takes legal action. Bravo, Bravo, Ducking Bravo recaps that Louis formally requested that she no longer contact him or disparage him publicly. Exactly what Glenn Reiser, her ex-husband, said. He also asked that she return the ring, reimburse him for the $175,000 spent on his American Express card, and return a Peloton Peloton bike leased by his company. Boo-boo, you lost all that. (laughs) I know, yeah. You ain't getting that back. (laughs) A few days later, the ex-girlfriend reaches out to Louis' friend to ask him to communicate with Louis on her behalf. Bravo, ducking Bravo, says that 
quote, during their relationship, they were active donors at Charity for Women. Louis states that he helped her become a board member. He had been a longtime supporter of theirs. On April 1st, he emailed the director of organization and Vanessa heard about it. He explained why he believed Vanessa may not be a good fit for the organization. In the court document, which showcases the letter written by Louis, Louis explains that Vanessa verbally abused him on a regular along with psychological manipulation to threats of personal and professional harm. Go on all about TRH.com. We have the exact letter that was written from Louis to them. So just go on the go on our website and you'll see it. In another court document, Louis reveals Similarly, similarly to what Glenn, Glenn did, that Vanessa would locate him and fed estrangements between Louis and his support system to ensure he remains under her control. The court document states that two days later, Vanessa contacted Louis, and in a moment of weakness, he did respond to her. He says that, quote, she was recording our conversation and trying to convince me not to pursu- pursue my claims for the ring and money. Okay, so just so I can, I'm making sure I'm keeping up with all this, they go to court. He goes to court for these are court documents. Yeah, violent. no, I know He's not going to court. Yeah, yeah, the, this is in court to get the money back, or is this to like for a restraining order? Because they're not married. It's not like they need to get a divorce or anything. So this is all. No, he's filing court documents um, to get his money back. Okay, um, and that she not disparage his name. Yes, and okay, all this stuff. And at this point, I think he's talking maybe allegedly. Like in my opinion, he might be talking to exes her and finding out more stuff i don't know yeah and so like so like for him he kind of knows that he needs to do this all in court because it's going to get crazier yeah okay smart yeah go ahead two weeks later vanessa files a civil action complaint about keeping a business that louis made for her she asked for control of the business that he made for her louis files a suit right afterwards and state he's only filing because she won't return the ring and money owed to him he says she has engaged in sociopathic how do I say it? Sociopath. Yeah. Sociopathic behavior. Jesus. Yeah. To financially and emotionally harm him, a longstanding and well-documented pattern of behavior that she has engaged throughout her romantic life with past lovers. Um, And then Louis talks about more of that fight that he had in Massachusetts. Louis says um, she gave him back the engagement ring um, um, in May, 2019. Um, and Louis says he was not going to fall for her extortion again because she was saying like things that she was going to do. Um, so like in Massachusetts, when, what was it? Provincetown? What what was it? Yeah. uh, That's like, he starts talking about this in the court documents that he offered to drive her home, but asked her to stay elsewhere that evening as he wanted to discuss the breakup with her sons without her present, you know, and it was his house. Louis says she refused to come with her, um, with him, um, or stay elsewhere, you know, so he drove away. He then called the police, alerted them of the situation as he did not want to be in an altercation with her in case she showed up to his house. Like he knew she was going to show up to his house. Yeah. After driving off several hours later, the ex-girlfriend's son calls Louie and says that Vanessa wanted to be picked up at the hotel. He turned around to find her. And 90 minutes later, Vanessa's son calls again and says she found a ride. He says when he returned home, Vanessa was already in the driveway of his house waiting to take items out. And that Vanessa put her son up to calling him simply to waste his time. So now she's involving her kid. So here are texts now. How old is her kid? Do we know? I think he was like 17. Sorry, I asked like the little detail question. <laughs> yeah, I think he was like 18, 17 at the time. I'm not sure. Okay, so, so around, was- kind of around Louis' um, eldest. Okay, go. Well, no, that's Lu- – yeah, I mean, that's Louis' eldest age now, I think. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, around there. So here are some texts um, from October 30th. Um, and, like, here, just, just so you can see, here's, like, Louis, and he's like – Okay, do not come to my house today. Give me space. Thank you. You'll be fine for the next. You'll be fine for the next twenty four hours. She responds, "I need to get my stuff. I'm sorry." He's like, "Oh well, I'm sorry. I need my home tonight to be with my kids. Don't make this any worse, please." She says, "I will be there in three thirteen. He says, "Come tomorrow when no one's there. Then you can do whatever it is that you want to do. I don't want anything going on with my kids there. Respect my home and my kids, and back away for twenty four hours." She's like, "I'll be there at three <laughs> twelve. So now a minute before." Chantel, this isn't funny. This is fucking scary. No, I know. I just really can't. Like this, is, I, know. I swear. When I'm telling you, and I, and like when I watch these things, I don't understand how people get in relationships like this. She's made it her life mission to um, be a victim of narcissism, like you know, uh, abuse from her partners. And like, look, he goes, Vanessa, please don't make this any worse. She responds, "LOL." She's a fucking it's psychopath. A game to her. Uh, 
He goes, okay. So then he goes, last time I'm going to ask you kindly come back tomorrow to get your things. Today's not a good day for this. She's like, no, he's not even being disrespectful. Like if I was a guy, I don't give a shit. Like if I, if I was a woman, I don't give a shit. I, like, you know, like I would go ham. I'd be like, listen, you mother trucker. I'm telling you right now, do not effing come to my house. I will call the effing cops. You're a psychopath. Like I would go crazy. And here he is. And he's like, please kindly my kids. Like what the fuck? I'm like, no, I would lose my shit. <laughs> And then he goes, you're making this worse. Please respect my home and my son. Come to the house when no one is there tomorrow. No one will be there. You can do whatever you want. Please not today. You're not welcome in my home today. Please do not come to my house and even knock on the door. You can come back tomorrow or another day. I am not there. You're not welcome there today. Please understand. Respect my home. Respect my son. He's pleading with her. And then she's like, I will quietly grab some belongings. And he's like, not today. I'm not insulting you or speaking badly. Respect my home and come back tomorrow. This isn't a man who's belittling, you know, like Margaret Joseph said that he, be he belittles. He's asking for her to respect him in this situation and that her children, he doesn't want the children involved. She goes, not how this works. And then he's like, last time I'm going to ask you kindly, come back tomorrow to get your things. Today is not a good day for this. She goes, no. Oh He's like, God. you're making this worse. Please respect my home and my son. Come to the house when no one is there tomorrow. He, like, he keeps saying this, you know. According to more court documents, Vanessa allegedly tried to imposter a Facebook account and was controlling Louis Ruelas' Facebook account without him knowing. Louis was said to find out about it when IT came to his house and looked through his computer and found the IP address matching her email. And, so, this, and she, already did, she already did a fake account for the other ex. Yeah. So go on all oh about TRH.com and you will see the documents. You will see the IP address matching and that the email goes back to her email, her personal email. Um, so more from the case that we see. So this is, we got this from Bravo Ducking Bravo. So where she like, she kind of like dumbed it down about the court documents. Cause like, I'm like, what is all this? And my husband was like, what do you want me to look at it? Cause my husband's an attorney. And I was like, no, because it's like too much. And then you're going to ask me questions like, who the hell is this girl? And I don't have time to explain it to you. <laughs> okay. So on May 15th, Louis files his reply to her counter asserting his allegations that she wrote the first person's letter, misdiagnosed him and did abuse alcohol. Um, defendant does not deny that she wrote first person letters from, uh, you know, him. So like speaking of him, so she doesn't deny it. Um, so she uh, was trying to gaslight him, um, trying to get him to believe that he was bipolar and eventually um, admitting that she was the one who needed help following her intoxicated vehicle operations. Um, she did demand and take money without his consent. Um, these are court documents that you guys can go on all about terryh.com and see. Um, th they talk about Let's see what else there are. Evidence submitted of a message sent to an ex existing text chain with Louis Vanessa and an employee of his company on Saturday, May 9th. Um, he says this group text chain hadn't been used in two months. And she just like randomly sends like a music late at night, 1146 p.m. Higher Love by James Vincent McMorrow. And then she wrote, I'm an idiot lately. Oh, what? Okay. You guys, what the fuck? <laughs> Okay. I just know homegirls projecting, but go ahead. Yeah. Here's what Louis alleges happened. Um, that, you know, when they were at a charity event, like she screamed at the speakers, stormed out while intoxicated. Oh my God. Um, yeah, she, and she did a lot of this at charity events, I guess, like even Bravo ducking Bravo, who's like very neutral, like said that she was amazed by how, mu how much involvement Louis has in, uh, charities. Um, and he does a lot for philanthropy and all that stuff. So, yeah. Um, so she would do this at things like that. Um, let's see what else. So here's what Louis alleges happened at one of them. We talked about this as she screamed speakers. Yeah. Okay. So, um, Vanessa and Paula united to catfish him on Facebook. So that's where the other ex comes. And he had a further display of erratic and bullying behavior. The defendant and my former fiance Paula, so I guess he was engaged to Paula, created a Facebook account mm. pretending to be a realtor named Karen, which you, if you read above all about terrorist.com, you'll see all that information. They have friend requested me, my business associates, and even my son that, um, like that's fucking wild. You guys like, this is like so crazy. 
defendant claims that he was engaged to Paula um, and that Paula and I ended our engagement when I uncovered that she had been arrested for stabbing her ex-husband on Mother's <gasps> Day and was denied <laughs> custody of the right to adopt, adopt children based on her criminal history. Louis, Louis, Louis. <laughs> Yeah. Louis is L for lover boy. That's all I'll tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Louis previously submits this letter about Vanessa reaching out to Paula. Vanessa allegedly contacted Paula to see if her ring was Paula's old ring. So she says, like, I responded to Paula the other day after you told me you hadn't taken the medication in a week or so. I began to feel so confused and distrustful. The first thing I thought was, what else are you lying to me about? So then she felt the need to go you know, contact his ex fiance. She apologizes to Louis after doubting him. Louis also asserts that she ignores that he is out a lot of money from renovations and wedding deposits. Defend defendant does not address the thousands of dollars um, expended on renovations on property, her mother's home, the real property I purchased and now remain stuck with in the wake of our engagement termination and the array of financial liabilities I'm responsible for association with wedding planning. She didn't deny the incident at the first charity event. Um, and she does say she was not afraid of him to spend his money. And this was Louis says for someone who claims to have been afraid of me, the defendant certainly had little fear of spending my money and telling me what to do and what she perceived as wrong with as my soon as me being her soon to be husband, which is a good point. Yeah. For the last few years, Vanessa Reiser has made the world believe Louis Ruelas is a narcissist. So what exactly is a narcissist? I just want to touch on this because when I read this, I was like, wait, this is exactly Vanessa. So a narcissistic personality disorder involves a pattern of self-centered, arrogant thinking and behavior, a lack of empathy and consideration for other people, an excessive need for admiration. Often others describe people with NPD as cocky, manipulative, selfish, patronizing, demanding. This way of thinking and behaving surfaces in every area of the narcissist's life from work, friendships, to family, and love relationships. People with narcissistic personality disorders are extremely resistant to changing their behavior, even when it's causing them problems. Their tendency is to turn the blame onto others. What's more is that they're extremely sensitive and react badly to even the slightest criticism, disagreements, or perceived uh, slights which they view as personal attacks for the people in narcissist in the narcissist life it's often easier just to go along with their demands to help the to help avoid the coolness and rage rages i actually have hello tom hello. sandoval oh my gosh i was like wait <laughs> did we disconnect <laughs> no i i'm just like anybody know like anybody who watches fucking bravo okay like you've seen multiple narcissists so if you can't yeah. pick them out there's a problem well, it was so funny because I had contacted her and I was like, why are you doing this? Like, you are a therapist because I started like reading this. This was like a few months ago. And I was like, you know, you are a therapist. Like if if right now the, psych the board of psychology like saw that you had did this and knows your background, like you are claiming to help other people when you yourself have a problem. And she uh, she's like, I just want Teresa to know. And I was like, OK, if you want to help women, that's one thing. Teresa knows everything and she is choosing to be with Louie. Anyways, she ended up blocking me and then she <laughs> ended up making a post saying that I like attacked her. So when I was reading this, I was like, what the fuck? I couldn't even respond. I, I have all the messages. I couldn't even respond because she blocked me. And then she, then I realized, wow, she loves attention because she just went and made a post that I, she didn't, she didn't put our messages. Cause why would she put our messages there? She looks fucking psychopath but she just said all you know all about terry just you know uh, like uh, attacking to get my um psychology license whatever and i didn't i just said you know like if, if more people know about this like that is going to happen you, you know how are you even teaching this whatever the next the next document that we're going to show you are letters written from vanessa riser displaying narcissistic traits and verbally abusing louis Ruelas. the letter louis alleges she wrote begins by quoting the text he sent where he says, you're not welcomed in my home. Please do not come to my house. You can come back tomorrow on another day. Um, uh, you're not welcome there today. Please understand and respect my home and my son. So this is what she says. <sighs> she goes, 13 times you wrote my home or my kids. Here's your karma medicine for the day. You are an inconsiderate, loud, obnoxious, selfish, aggressive, nasty person. You are an impulsive, woman-hating, um, 
unstable, narcissistic, lying soul. You're an egotistical, spoiled, boundaryless psychopath whose one desire are to feed a fleeting thought and win. You think you can muscle and power your way through any issue with money and it's pathetic. You are an anxious lunatic with no self-control who buzzes around in mania with a hyper sex drive, yet no ability to self-soothe, self-soothe. You are, uh, I don't know if this word is, glutinous fool. I don't know, someone can tell me. Glutinous. Glutinous, thank you, fool. See, I don't, I don't know these words because I don't, they're not in my vocabulary. We don't use these. <laughs> Glutinous is someone that like basically like indulges over everything. Like they overindulge. Okay. Like wow. especially with money and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Whose only, <laughs> whose only goal is to feed his, I, um, his ID in the moment. Being with you is like having a baby, whimpering and sulking in the corner for attention or crying and stomping your feet for it. I raised my son and I'm not your babysitter. I am done with you as a project. I need a real man in my life. I deserve a real man in my life. I deserve peace and love. You are a liar and a manipulator. Thank God the foundation I built with my son and the bond we share can never be broken by you and your lies or your family the way you are used to it. Your gaslighting attempts only backfire. What you and your family did to Paula does not work in my world. I laugh at your attempts and I raise you mine because your son will know your true colors when I'm done with you. And my son will always stand proudly next to me. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. Yeah. Eat your words, mama. Eat your words. We'll see. You should repent and beg um, Paula to forgive you uh, for what you have done to them. And then you should tell everyone you gaslighted what you have done. I see you for who you are now. You don't know what love is. Love is letting you sleep in the car after I get up at 3 a.m. because you deserve to rest. But when I'm tired at 8.30 p.m after a long day you are pouting for more attention love is taking pride in our family and home and allowing our children to be the best version of themselves because they deserve it um yeah and then she just like love is allowing me to properly grieve my dog when she died which is i don't know this is this cuts off because there's something whatever it was narcissistic to not have empathy at the time and that is also a huge red flag um, love is not abandoning abandoning someone six hours away and taking their money away. Love is letting people be who and whatever the f they need to be. Oh, okay, so it's swear words that are blocked off. You don't know what love is. Go find out. Um, I'm sleeping on the floor of my mother's home. She has no working dryer or heat. She has spiders, dirt, chaos, and no food. And yet I'm happier when I'm not around you. Read that again until it sinks. I say this because you have punished me for too long with your childish antics. But most of all, you made effing and you lied to this effing face. You smoke, eat horribly. You filth about the earth like a loon. And the fact that I have to tell you to eat vegetables, little boys tells me a lot about where your growth stopped and when you are stuck. Read that again and let me say that again. I tell you this not because you called me a whore and left me in town, threatened my precious social work license, told me in a text that everyone leaves me, which was true, lied to my face, padlocked me out of the home. That's what she's saying. But again, the cops came and that never happened. And the cops wrote in a court document, in their document, when the cops showed up to their house, that that never happened. Um, and then it, in the in the letter, you guys, she says that she was the one who demanded that he attend the warrior program. You know, the warrior program where he like sent her a video and then she shared it to blogs. Oh, so, yeah, 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 the video. Yeah. So she says, you know, I will only remotely consider being around you on any level after you go to that warrior program and then go on medication for anxiety, ADHD, mania, and there's no medication for this, but narcissism. You even have borderline tendencies as evidenced by all this lying. How do you expect me to trust the liar? You must also stop um, smoking and eat vegetables. Pay off my... (laughs) Pay off my house and let me go one year with no tenant. After this experience, I do not want to be on the street again, living in fear. After one year and less fighting, we can begin to rent it out again. Stay at my mother's next week for a week to see what it has been like. I need access to guest house for work. Um, If you do not become medicated, we cannot even talk. I'm lucky you didn't leave me somewhere more remote with less resources to find my way like you did Paula. Okay, when someone breaks up, you guys... Like, I'm sorry that you guys depend on a man. Chantel, thank God we work. But I, I really, like, you You, you guys weren't even married. You're asking him to pay for a year of your, like, your room. I'm so confused. And if all of this was true, like, let's play devil's advocate. This, this whole letter is true, but we know it's not. Like, you would be done with him. You'd be happy to not speak a word to yeah, him ever again. She doesn't sound like someone who's scared of, you know, an abusive relationship. She absolutely doesn't sound like. She sounds like she is the one. Who and he is the one who's scared of her and trying to figure out this relationship with her and he doesn't know what to do. He sounds like he's under her like love spell. I don't know what the hell it is because 
if, if this was a man and if this was a man doing this to me, I would literally like, oh my God, I probably like, I don't even know. I don't even want to say the wrong thing, but I'd be scared for my life and like have a firearm at my house. Cause I'd be fucking scared. I would think someone like this would try to come and kill me. I just would. Um, now, uh, so there's a lot of court documents and we just wanted to do like a deep dive. It, there's a lot of court documents. Again, you can go on all about terry's.com. Bravo ducking. Bravo has stuff. Um, Vanessa Reiser has now given herself the title of a narcissism expert and calls herself a solution focused psychotherapist offering sessions despite mm. her history. She even recently moved to New Jersey with sources telling us, quote, she's trying to get on the show. It would be a dream come true if she was cast. That's not all. We recently got insight by multiple All About Terry readers that Vanessa Reiser would go into the social chat app Clubhouse on Dave Quinn's club and would always speak in the room. So here's what um, an All About <laughs> Terry listener. This is just a lot. Like, she's super yeah. obsessed. Yeah. Here's what an All About Terry listener said to us. Um, since Vanessa has filed a restraining order request, I wanted to share how she used to be so obsessed with Louie and Teresa that she would go into the clubhouse. Um, in parentheses, social chat app rooms. Back when there were lots of Bravo rooms on Dave Quinn's, ho on Dave Quinn, he had hosted a club, especially on the days that news about Louis or Teresa broke out. She'd also speak in the rooms, listening to her. The majority of the listeners determined that she was actually a narcissist and obsessed with Teresa and Louis. She stopped talking about specifics and became vague after she allegedly received a quote book deal. But enough of us had heard and seen her to determine she was obsessed and definitely has narcissist tendencies. I also got another message that she was on Facebook and someone called her the ex-girlfriend and she corrected them and got very upset and said, I'm an ex-fiance, not the ex-girlfriend. Like, know your facts. Vanessa recently, she made headlines after she alleged that one of her patients were actually hired to spy on her by Louis Ruelas. She filed a restraining order against him despite being the one who was talking about him daily and contact contacting anyone affiliated with Teresa Judice. Prior to providing the restraining order to page six, Vanessa Reiser called former RHONJ friend of Kim D. She told her that she was going to be putting a story out there and to spread the word. Not something, uh, not something normal that a victim of abuse would do. Vanessa Reiser is allegedly behind the video leaks of Louis Ruelas, and she mostly engages on Melissa Gorga, Melissa Gorga's sisters, Lisa Simpson, and Kim, as well as Teresa Judice's brother, Joe Gorga's Instagram account, commenting on each post. She also comments on Melissa and Joe's daughter, Antonia's Instagram account. Oh my. Melissa's sisters both follow her, and they'll comment on her page as oh. well. Yeah, both Melissa's sister. Like, that is sister. really scary, because I guarantee you, like, a lot of the messages that she probably has sent the Gorgas, like Melissa and Joe, there's probably, it's all probably one-sided. They're probably not even responding half the time, because they they clearly see she's a psycho. I think they're responding. I don't know. I'm sure they were in the beginning to get some dirt, and then they got the dirt, and then she keeps going and going, and they're probably like, what the hell is this girl? But they're like, advocating they should be for scared. this person. They're like, yeah. you know, Melissa started going on Instagram after, and she started speaking out about narcissism, you know? So it's it's just whatever. Vanessa Reiser has also developed a close relationship with Kim D after spilling tea on Louis Ruelas. She smiled as she walked Kim D's recent fashion show. Go look at the picture on allaboutterryh.com. Vanessa Reiser is a mom of one who spends her days raising awareness for narcissistic abuse, despite it being clear she was with she was the narcissist in her relationship with her first husband, with Glenn Reiser, her boyfriend Paul, and now Louis Ruelas. She has an R-H-O-N-J highlight on her Instagram page and continues to befriend anyone who isn't a fan of Louis Ruelas and Teresa Judice. This is the story of Vanessa Reiser. And it is scary. That's what I got. Wow, I wish I had, like, the applause um, button to, like, applaud you for going through all that. So great job, Roxanne. I know. It did. It took me a lot of time, y'all. But to me, it's worth it because I, I really did not want to put any of this out there. I can tell yeah, that. Yeah, for the longest time, you just never I mentioned her. I don't want to talk her, about never, her. Mm -hmm. Because I knew she thrived off of it. Because after me and her were talking and then she goes and makes a post, I was like, damn, like, wow, she likes this. Like, she lives off of this and i just was like wondering like what her son her son who's like over 18 now was thinking about all of this i'm almost positive like at this point in his life he's like what the fuck and i just hope that he has a good relationship with his dad um because i do think that all the men in her life were duped by her i mean i don't know how i men are stupid and we all said it before so i mean like i don't know how they could be duped by her but yeah she this is something this is a pattern this is a history and 
it will all be on all about TRH.com Friday morning. So you guys can look at all the records and everything, but it's, it's very sad. And it's not about, again, it's not about like Louie or anything, but the fact that people can come out there and say that, and then people take it as truth. It's messed up. Just like Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. How the hell did Amber Heard win a, or Johnny Depp win a, um, a case about defamation. What is it? How do you say it? De- defamation. De- defamation. You guys, these words today, but like, it's very hard to win a case like that. And that's exactly and it's it's just it's just so sad that you're abusing the court systems yeah. too, like to go and, you know, file another restraining order three years later. He hasn't seen you like what restraining order like you guys. He needs one on you. Yeah, exactly. I don't think like I don't know. I just think that she's mentally unwell and she's not going to stop because she's getting so much attention off this and yeah, she like this is the most attention, attention that she's will ever get in and any this is relationship all she's wanted in her life yeah this is literally all that she's ever wanted in her life like she clearly probably has like an upbringing we are gonna have more tea, tea about this um and it's gonna be from people that knew her um for a really long time wow. margaret joseph doesn't know her uh no everyone that has talked about her they don't know her and it's sad because there's actual victims there's actually actual victims who go through this who are struggling on a day-to-day and she thinks because she's a woman that because she says it it's the truth and people have fell for it and that's why me as a woman i am going to call out this woman who is lying and we don't have this full story and this history of what she's been doing and the fact that she had a restraining order for every from her ex-husband for everything that she has now done to louis so part two will be coming. All right. So stay well, tuned. Well, the good thing is, I guess, if her next guy or someone, he can she, Google she her name. She has a boyfriend. Oh, my God. Well, it's not like if you Google her name, it's not, you find the court documents. Like, it was, like, even hard for me to find court documents. I had to, like, ask a million people a million times. And then, But I'm saying, at least now you guys are reporting about this. So, like, you know, you'll see some headlights. But, yeah, usually nurses know how to walk, talk their way through things so yeah talk it out act like you yep. know whatever act like he was a problem she didn't do anything she yeah. was perfect yep she took all this money she was so scared all this stuff so yeah you guys um i'm sorry we try to get this on sooner and again it's been a week for me a week of you know lots going on but we're gonna still is- do yeah, we're going to Summer House and Bravo or Summer House and Uniform. No, we're going to actually share the Summer House and Bravo before we share this oh okay yeah so uh, that's all. <laughs> and on our schedule. <laughs> that's I, Chantal works around me. Thank you, Chantal. Poor girl. She's like, she's like, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> it's just been a hell because there's been so much going on with reunions. But you guys, we have a giveaway going on all um, on our YouTube at. I know someone left us a review and they were like, you guys need to actually say what your YouTube is. And it's just all about TRH podcast. Subscribe. We will. Uh, tell you the winner um, on next week's episode. So the subscribe. reunion episode of episode three. Or, yeah, yep, part episode three. three. Part three. Yep, exactly. So make sure that you guys are subscribed. Please, uh, I know I, I haven't said this very much, but please leave us a review. We've had a lot of people, you know, come from uh, come for us as of recent. Um, a lot of, you know, trolls, people that are from Melissa's camp, you know, try to bring our efforts down. All you have to go is on Apple Podcast. While you're listening to our episodes, scroll a little bit down. It'll say write a review. Please give us a five star or don't write a review. Just don't listen to us anymore. But we appreciate all the support. We appreciate the messages. We hope you guys enjoyed this episode. Let us know what you guys think. And thank you so much for being such a great support to us, having our backs. And we really appreciate you guys. All right. Well, that's all for this episode. Bye, guys. Bye, guys. This is still an ongoing case, but in 2021, a judge ordered that Louis keeps the office computer after it wipes off her info and that Vanessa keeps her website business, pays Louis 20000 keeps the remaining funds in her account, and that neither will lie about the other, make derogatory statements about the other, or harass the other, something Vanessa has failed to follow. Be sure to check out allabouttrh.com for everything Royal Housewives and Bravo TV. And please make sure to subscribe and follow us on Instagram at allabouttrhpodcast.